Hello, FlossTube! This is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Today is Tuesday, April 20th at approximately 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, give or take. And I'm coming to you today with my next installment of FlossTube. If you're new to my channel, FlossTube is a um, subset of YouTube where the people that create the videos talk about cross-stitching. And this is my next installment of my Floss Tube video. This is going to be Floss Tube number 112, I believe. And if you're new, I welcome you to my channel. Hopefully you'll be able to find, to gain some insight into the wonderful world of cross stitch and get some inspiration for another project of yours. Or um, just in general, have something kind of fun to watch as you do your stitching. If you're a returning watcher, thank you very much for coming back. I hope again that you find something here that you can use and that you're enabled to purchase some new stuff. Um, if you're a subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing um, and thank you for coming back. Uh, hopefully, again, you'll find something inspirational here and uh, get something out of my video. Um, if you're a new watcher and you haven't yet subscribed I encourage you to click the subscription button below and to also click the notification bell so you're notified when I upload new content um, I've been kind of uploading new content about once a week once every other week or so and on my channel here I also talk about diamond painting and ghost hunting and some of my other crafts and hobbies that I partake in in my life um, so this video, I am going to be talking to you a little bit about some haul that I have. I have quite a bit of haul. And um, also some updates on a couple of my stitching projects that I've been working on this, this month. It hasn't been too much, but um, I do have a couple of updates. And also a little bit of plans and um, some new uh, floss tubers that I have... Uh, kind of run across this last couple these last couple of weeks that um, have uh, <laughs> intrigued me and gotten me kind of into um, a couple of different things. So uh, for this video, um, I am going to actually start off with some haul. So this is some of the stuff I've gotten over the last couple of weeks. So you'll have to bear with me because I get to open some of this stuff. So bear with me just a minute. So, um, first thing I kind of want to go over, um, here in Columbus, in the Columbus area, we have, uh, a chain of bookstores called Half Price Books. I believe there are other places. They are located in other places across the country, but, um, every once in a while you can wander in and find some good stuff at Half Price Books. I found this, um, December 1993 issue of Leisure Arts Magazine for 50 cents at Half Price Books this last weekend. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, there are a couple of really cute patterns in here. Um, I think I already have this issue in my stash already. Um, but some of the things that were really cute, there are all these little Christmas ornaments in here. I may actually end up stitching the ho, 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 um, and some st other, other things in here. But, um, the Santa on the cover is really cute. There's this, uh, duck that is in a quilt is kind of kind of interesting um you know just it's, i'm not going to do a full walkthrough but uh yeah there's just some interesting interesting little things the neat thing about leisure arts magazine is there's also other um needlework and other crafts in here here's a knit and crochet float uh little snowflake ornament type things that you can stitch they um, include all different kinds of crafts in here. That's why it's a leisure arts magazine. Here's an interesting pattern. This is cherry wa cheery warmth. This is basically a uh, knit dicky. If you know what a dicky is, so basically you just crochet this square, and it kind of sits here on your chest and a little bit on your back, so you can wear it under a shirt just like that. Known as a dicky or a false turtleneck I guess is another thing to call to call it 
Um, yeah, so they're just there's just all kinds of different things in here. I thought this blanket was really pretty. I might end up crocheting that at some point in time. It is called Cozy Winter Wrap. And it looks like this one is a double crochet, double, triple crochet, half double crochet, uh, single crochet, triple crochet. Um, yeah. So, yep. Little afghan that you can stitch up. Um some little applique things they have in here um, a beach checklist pattern that has it has a little beach chair and a beach towel and some other stuff laying on a beach it's really cute but yeah this is just an old issue of leisure leisure arts magazine that I picked up for 50 cents also at half price books for 50 cents in their magazine section um, I happened to find this Marjolene Baston um, Lenart pattern. Now this is really cute. I know a lot of, there's a, quite a few um, stitchers out there that um, collect Marjolaine Baston patterns. This is a pattern. As you can see, I picked it up for 50 cents. Um, I will likely never stitch something like this. It has lots of really cute chickadees all over it. So it's got really cute chickadees. Um, I am probably going to be giving this away. Um, or if you happen to express interest in it. Um, don't say giveaway because it's not really a giveaway. Um, if you're interested in this, um, I will take requests for it um, probably until, let's do until the end of April. So April 30, let's see, April 30th, Friday, April 30th at midnight Eastern time is the last time that I will take a request for this. So you have a week and a half to let me know if you would like, um, if you'd like me to send you the Marjolaine, Marjolaine Baston. The um, first person that says that they wanna stitch this, um, just, you know, put on there something to the effect that you wanna stitch Marjolaine's birds or Marjolaine Baston's birds or Baston's birds. Um, yeah, and I'll actually, I'll actually just, uh, you know what, let's actually make this a giveaway. So, um, through April 30th at midnight, Eastern Time, um, if you put in your comment that you would like to, um, you would like to stitch Margie's birds, or birds, I will look for the word birds in your comment, um, if you would like to stitch the birds, please in indicate that you would like to stitch Margie's birds or Marjolaine Baston's birds or Baston's birds or the birds in your comment. It must be the plural form of birds. I will search the um, comment picker and um, for my next installment, assuming that I don't post anything before the 30th of April on midnight April 30th or um, soon after midnight April 30th, I will um, I will pick a winner for Margie's birds. All right now, this pattern I will tell you is one big sheet. It's like on cardstock, so it's one big sheet like this. Um, it is a color chart. I can show you a little bit here. It is a color chart, and it, there is a little bit of a hole here in the middle. So you can see right in the middle there's a hole, but there is no chart there. Like there's a um, a white border on each of the four sections. So there's a section here, a section here, a section here, and a section here. And there is no charting in with the hole. So there's a little bit of wear on it, but um, yeah, it's a color chart. It looks pretty, uh, pretty pristine other than the fact that it has a little bit of wear right in the middle there. Um, but yeah, I will give this away on, um, after April 30th. So you have until April 30th at midnight to enter this midnight Eastern time. This is the, um, Marjolaine Baston, um, birds, little chickadees. It's called gathering. 
Now remember, you have to use Margie's birds, Baston's birds, birds. The word birds is what I'm going to be looking for for the giveaway. So uh, it's not really, well, yeah, I guess it is a giveaway. But don't say giveaway in your comment. If you say giveaway in your comment, I will delete it. Um, it ha you have to use the word birds um, somewhere in your comment. And I will um, sometime, you know, within a few days after April 30th, I will... Um, do a comment picker on this and um, a random comment generator selection and the winner will be sent the um, this pattern. You have to be 18 because I have to be able to request your address. Don't say the word giveaway and um, yeah, have fun with this. Um, I, I think her patterns are really pretty, but I just I just would never stitch this and I know there's quite a few people out there so if you know of somebody who is um, who might be interested in it have them stop by or you can enter them f enter it for them um, or enter for for this for them uh, just you know again use the word birds in your comment so that was uh, some haul I got at half price books the other night okay those of you that have been watching a little while also know that I am in Crazy Annie's Let's Go Sledding Ornament Club and I got the next ornament pattern. It's the tree, the reindeer, and the house. This is really cute. This one is stitched all in DMC. The key is for the entire series. Three, four. Okay. So I got the next installment of the Let's Go Sledding Ornament. And now I can all right cool um, some of you that are into some various flash uh, not flash tube but Facebook groups um, there is a uh, group called Mo's sale and Mo is um, I think her name is actually Marine but she um, hand dyes floss, and I think she might even hand dye fabrics, but she's known for her silk hand dyed floss and her cotton hand dyed floss. And she posts pictures, or a general picture up uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday of the week, of the week that she's gonna have the sale on Saturday, and then she posts the skeins for sale on Saturday. And uh, I wanna say a week ago, I didn't know if it was last weekend that I purchased a skin of floss on her um, Facebook group on Saturday, but um, I requested a skin of floss, and this is it. Look at look at the look at the flamingos, you guys. The flamingos are cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. I kind of forgot that I had ordered this, so um, I did pay for it as soon as I got the invoice, but I kind of forgot that I ordered it until it came. So this is the Mo Cell Floss, and this is a 100-yard Hank. This is gorgeous, you guys. It is pastel and beautiful. Pastel and beautiful. So uh, keep in mind that my um, camera is going to wash this out. Again, oh, Jesus. Oh. Okay, this is a 100-yard Hank, and it is cotton floss. Um, I believe I paid like 12 bucks, 14 bucks, something like that for the 100 yards. So I have 100 yards of this. This is beautiful. This would make a really pretty spring, um, monochrom not monochromatic, but a really pretty spring sampler. But look at this, you guys. This is gorgeous. Um, this, this down here is kind of a um, bright green. Then you have a bright yellow. And it goes into a blue and a pink with a little bit of purple in there. But, um, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And it's very, it's bright pastels, if you consider pastels bright. Really pretty. But this is called, this is in the colorway Giver, I think. Giver. Give it. Giver. I can't really tell, but this is a um, hundred yards of cotton, Mo sale. So this should actually be well more than enough for a a uh, nice 
Crested piece. Um, I'm kind of collecting some of Mo Sale flosses, so um, yeah, this will go into my stash. I'm really looking forward to that. So, and it came in this really cute flamingo pouch. So, thank you, Mo Sale. I will put the link to the Mo Sale Facebook group where she posts or where the um, the skein sales happen on Saturdays in the description box below. So, um, Crazy Annie's also does a um, Fabric of the Month Club, and I have been getting that. Let me actually cut down here. Oh, I can move it this way. Even better. I don't have to cut it. So, um, she also does a Fabric of the Month Club, and I got my Fabric of the Month. Ooh, this is pretty. So this is the Fabric of the Month Club, um, and it's fabrics from Color and Cotton. So here's the information on how to get into the Fabric of the Month Club. You can go to facebook.com slash groups slash Crazy Annie's Crazy Stitchers. That is the Facebook group. Or you can like like the Facebook page at Crazy Annie Stitching on Facebook. Yep. So that's what you can do. This one is called Color and Cotton, and the colorway is Pixie. This is a 36 count Edinburgh Edinburgh linen. And this this was this is the February 2021 Fabric of the Month Club. And this is Color and Cotton Pixie. So this is kind of a bluish purple. And this is 36 count. I don't have a lot of 36 count, so I believe most of my fabric of the month is coming as 36 count. So this will be a really nice, really nice addition. And this is a 17 by 26 piece of 36 count. So look at that. That looks more blue. It's actually kind of leans more towards purple, but it's a bluish purple. Look at that. That is beautiful. And again, this is color and cotton pixie. Oh, beautiful. So I'm actually really excited to have some 36 count in my stash. So that's really exciting. 36 count pixie color and cotton. So um, I am expanding my fabrics and my count, my fabric count, because I don't believe I have any 36, much at all anyway, 36 count. So that is the Crazy Annie's Fabric of the Month. That was the February 2021. Okay. Don't have too much more left in um, Stash Hall. So um, one of the YouTubers that I have been watching recently, uh, this video today brought to you by Dunkin' Ice Coffee. This is the uh, Girl Scout S'mores flavor. This is my first bottle of the Dunkin' Ice Coffee. Um, I wanted to try it because the s'mores just kind of sounded interesting. Didn't realize until I bought it that it was the Girl Scout s'mores cookie flavor. But I had never tried the Dunkin' Iced Coffee, and I wanted to give it a try. So um, I normally, pay, if I'm going to get an iced coffee like this in a bottle, I usually get the Starbucks Frappuccinos in French Vanilla. That's my favorite one. But I wanted to try this. And honestly, I think this is pretty good. It's not super sweet. It's not as sweet as the Starbucks, and it was cheap, cheaper. I think it was like $1.50 at the grocery store. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was on sale. But uh, I'll probably end up trying a couple of the other flavors in this. This actually isn't that bad, and I'm kind of enjoying it being somewhat late at night. And the fact that it's not super-duper sweet, I can taste the, like, the roasted marshmallow in it. To a degree. 
So yeah, it's pretty good. I'm not sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts. I'm not sponsored by the coffee. I'm not sponsored by the, you know, Girl Scouts. Just a little plug for something I'm trying for the first time. All right, so I was talking about YouTubers that I have been watching. So I've been watching um, a couple of people. I have to refer back to my notes. But um, in my last video, I had mentioned that um, Link is my homeboy and Carrie and Stitches, um, the two YouTubers who started the under 1,000 subs club on, hashtag on YouTube, they are promoting people with YouTube channels talking about floss tube or floss tube channels that have currently have under 1,000 subscribers. I have under 1,000 subscribers, so I actually promoted myself on um, one of their one of their um, videos and or on one of their uh, video pages. And Sarah King from our Stitching Kingdom and Sammy J Stitches have also been plugging the under 1,000 subs club. And one of the people, one of the people that I happen to come across in all of their plugs of various YouTubers was Sprinklestein Stitches. And I will put the links to these uh, YouTubers down there but in the description box below. But Sprinklestein Stitches on her... Um, On her one of her recent videos she had ordered a pattern from Lindy Stitches you guys all know Lindy Stitches um, she's a wonderful flash tuber she uh, <laughs> she has great hair she she has some really cute patterns really cute as heck patterns but Sprinklestein Stitches had ordered a pattern that really struck my fancy and um, so I went ahead and I actually went to Lindy Stitches website um, and I ordered this pattern and I also ordered the floss pack to go with the pattern because I just figured hey she had it ready readily available and it was ready to go and I could get the pattern and the floss all together so this one really struck struck me and it was really really cute so I decided that I had to get it um, this is called Jackalopian Tapestry. Look at that jackalope, you guys. Look at the jackalope. Yes, that is a rabbit with antlers. Yes. Yes, it is. So it's the Jackalopian Tapestry. Um, if you go to Sprinklestein Stitches, she shows this in her Floss Tube number 18 video. That's where that's where I saw it. So I had to get it. It's from Lindy Stitches. It's Jackalopian Tapestry. This is a stitch count of 100 by 100. Um, the fabric was 30 Count Weeks Dye Works Platinum Linen. I don't know if I'll be stitching that on Platinum Linen or not. I don't know. It just depends on what I could find. The floss that's used are Dinky Dyes Weeks Dye Works and DMC. And it uses full crosses, three-quarter stitch, and back stitch. So she also had the um, she also had the uh, flosses for it. She also had the flosses for it. So it came in this it, oh so before I show you the flosses, came in this little bubble bubble mailer and look at that cute 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 hand drawn picture from Lindy Stitches. She she's so funny. Look at that. Side Tina, that was hand drawn on the outside of the envelope that the um, order came in. So look at this, you guys. This is the floss bundle. This is the floss bundle, and it came tied up in this ribbon like this. This is the floss bundle for um, Jackalopian tapestry, and also in the piece I got two pieces of little coffee candy. So thank you, Lindy Stitches. And not only that, but there was this sticker. This is a sticker, and this is something that you can stick on the back of your cross stitch pieces when you're done. It has the title, stitch by the date, and any special notes you want to put on it. And it is a sticker. You're not going to be able to see that, but it's a nice quality sticker, and it's really pretty. 
I've seen these before um, on flask tube, but I haven't actually seen one in person. So it's kind of neat to have one of these on hand. So thank you, Lindy. That's very nice. And also, as a free gift, she sent this little postcard of this uh, little mouse pattern that is just absolutely uh, adorable. And it came with that little handwritten note that says, Thanks, Tina. Love, XO Steph. Hug and kiss, Steph. And it's the pattern for the little mouse. And it's called Before the Ball. It's an 18 by 25 stitch little mouse. Um, it's 32 count. It's stitched on, the model is stitched on 32 count vintage country mocha linen. And it uses DMC floss. It uses six colors of DMC floss. So look at that. And the pattern's on the back. I'd show you the back, but the pattern's on the back really cute. So you can go to lindystitches.com. I will put Lindy Stitches um, information down below, um, including her Facebook group. I believe she's got a Facebook group. But anyway, um, just to kind of get back to um, the flosses, here is the floss pack for um, Jackalopian Tapestry. So I will show you the floss and then I will kind of get into a little bit of why it's why this pattern spoke to me. All right, so I'm going to untie. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Come on. Untie, untie. Oh, come on. There we go. Nice little ribbon. All right, so the first color that came in the floss pack was Weeks Dye Works Busy Lizzie. Weeks Dye Works, Busy Lizzie. And this is kind of a, a kind of a rose pink. Not really a bright pink, it's kind of a rose pink. Busy Lizzie. The next color that came in the pack was Verdigree. Verdigree. V-E-R-D-I-G-R-I-S, Verdigree. And this is a kind of a bright green. Not a super bright green, it's kind of a bright pastel green. Again, a bright pastel. This one is kind of a salmon. This is called sockeye, of course. Sockeye salmon. This is called sockeye. And it's a very nice salmon orange. Salmon orange. This one is called lilac. I have lilac already in another kit, but this one is called lilac. This one is fawn. This is just kind of a um, creamy beige, off-white fawn. This one is um, lavender rose. Lavender rose. And this is kind of a really pretty light purple with a pink tone, pink undertone to it. Lavender rose. And then the um, brown, the rabbit, the brown and the rabbit, is Dinky Dyes Cocoa Bean. Dinky, dinky Dyes Cocoa Bean. I don't have this color in um, Dinky Dyes. This is a Dinky Dyes Silk Floss. So I'm looking forward to getting stitching on that. So I actually have the floss now for Jackalopian Tapestry. So. Um, when I saw this on Sprinklestein Stitches um, YouTube <laughs> channel, I stopped the video and went over to Lindy Stitches and I ordered this pattern. Um, some of you may know, some of you may not know, um, when I graduated from high school and went to college, I went to college at the University of Wyoming in Laramie, Wyoming. Um, hopefully you know your... Um, geography of the United States um, and you know where the state of Wyoming is if you know where Colorado is Wyoming's the state right above Colorado and I went to school at the University of Wyoming in Laramie which is about it's just under an hour drive west of Cheyenne Wyoming Cheyenne Wyoming is the capital of Wyoming and it's also the biggest city in the state of Wyoming. Laramie, I think, was the third or fourth biggest city when I was at school there in the late 80s, early 90s. And while I was there, one of the big things 
that the um, <laughs> the fraternities on campus, we had four, four sororities and four fraternities on campus. We were small campus. Um, out of state tuition for the University of Wyoming. I was out of state because I grew up in California, graduated from California, graduated high school from California and went to Wyoming. My grandfather at the time was still living in Cheyenne. My grandfather had passed away in, passed away in 2008. Um, I was out in school from 1989 to 1992. So um, I was at the university and then would go on weekends to visit him in Cheyenne. Um, there was like an hour drive away. So I'd be at the university staying in the dorms during the week and then I'd go visit him on weekends um, so I could kind of hang out with my grandpa. It was great. He was a UW alumni um, working for the uh, fire, not the fire department, but the uh, highway department in Cheyenne. So he, uh, he was retired by that time and we got to travel and we got to do some stuff together and it was great hanging out with him. But anyway, at U the University of Wyoming, go Pokes, <laughs> he, uh, a couple of the fraternities, they, one of the hazing things that they were known for was, uh, yeah, hazing is kind of not, not really good and not really looked greatly upon, but some of the hazing events can be kind of fun. So they used to take, um, some new potential, uh, frat brothers, um, out to outskirts of town into like open fields and stuff and take them jackalope hunting. So those of you that don't know what a jackalope is, a jackalope is a rabbit or hare with antlers. And they don't really exist. It's kind of an urban legend. They don't really exist. So they would take unsuspecting frat um, I forget the, the term for it, but um, the people that were pledging or that were going through rush, um, they would take them out jackalope hunting, and jackalopes don't exist. So I had to get this. It made me laugh. And that jackalope is just really cute. So Lindy Stitches, thank you very much for coming up with the jackalope pattern. This is really great. I'm loving this. And the fact that I have the floss is going to be great. Um, looking forward to actually getting to stitch this. This is going to be a fun stitch, I think. I'm looking forward to that. And that pretty much does it for all of my haul. So I am going to get into a little bit of a stitchy update now. And then I'll talk a little bit about some plans coming up. And um, then, um, yeah, we'll kind of go from there. So um, part of my whip go... Um, as you know, I, if you've been watching for a little bit, I have, um, been participating in WIPGO, which is bingo for your works in progress. And every month, um, Jessie Marie does stuff, who is the one who started WIPGO, picks two numbers and you have a bingo board and each of your, each month you have two squares that you work on. So for the month of April, we have um, I have square number three up here, which was Carolyn Manning's Aquamarine, and square number 21 down here, which is complete a started Mill Hill kit, or 500 stitches on a new kit. So, my Aquamarine, I actually finished. I finished that early in the month. Um, I showed, I believe I showed that to you last time, where I was on my video. And for March... I still had one that I needed to finish. So March's squares, one of them was start a new diamond painting, put in a thousand drills. So this, it was this square down here. I finished that um, on my birthday. Um, that was the diamond painting that I did. Um, it was Numiko by Sybil Art. It was from Craft Ease, I believe. And I finished, I worked on that on my birthday and got that done. And then the square over here that I was missing, right over here, square 10, was a project that is part of a series. So I was working on the Sing a Sampler so series by Silver Creek Samplers. And that is the one that is based on um, my favorite things from The Sound of Music. It's the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti um, banner that you can stitch that comes in four four patterns broke up into two each 
And um, I had started in the middle last December when The Sound of Music was airing on TV. And I had started in the middle uh, in the box. So my goal for this was to um, finish one section. My goal on that was to finish one section. And unfortunately, I didn't realize that I was missing a floss color when I had um, decided to work on that for the month of March. So I got to the point where I could um, finish it, and then I didn't get the missing floss. I was missing a Weeks Dye Works color, I believe. I didn't get the missing floss until like the first week in April. So um, last weekend, not this past weekend, but the weekend before last was Whipgo Weekend, where you focus on some of your Whipgo pieces to try and get a goal that a goal accomplished. And my goal was, since I had the floss, to finish my March square and to work on and to also work on the um, the second square for April, the Mill Hill kit. So here is the Sing a Sampler series. Uh, by Silver Creek Samplers. So I will show you what I did on this one. So on this one we have um, the color that I was missing is in this motif in the S, the motif in the O, and the motif after thread. There's only one color and I was able to complete that. The other thing that I had to finish was the needle. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do with that I don't even know where the camera is focusing, or if you can even see it. But I used metallic floss for that. Um, that is a uh, Krynik. I think the color is 101. I don't know what is what is going on there, but anyway. My camera is going a little wonky. But anyway, so... Yeah, you can kind of see the metallic thread for the needle. So that is the finish of the square. So I got the motif done in the S, the motif done in the O, the motif after the word thread, and I got the needle done. So that square is complete, so I was able to finish the, um, finish the square on that. So this is going to go away for a little bit. This is going to go away for a little bit um, until I can uh, get some motivation to work on it some more. Um, unfortunately, I had DVR'd um, The Sound of Music, so I was kind of working on this a little bit when I was watching The Sound of Music again for the, oh, probably millionth time. Um, and uh, my uh, DVR session of it, because I recorded it in December, um, expired at the beginning of, like, the second week in April. So, yeah. I don't have it anymore. I have it on tape somewhere, or... DVD or something, but uh, yeah, the Sing a Sampler series by Silver Creek Samplers. I finished the square for Wibgo. So that was uh, my progress on that. And then the second, um, the second square for April was the um, Mill Hill kit, complete a started Mill Hill kit. So I put complete a started Mill Hill kit, but then I decided what Mill Hill kit I was going to work on and I decided that I had a lot of stitching left to do on it and that I was just going to finish the stitching so I didn't have to finish the beads because I also realized about a week ago while I was working on this that I lost the bead pack that came in the kit that has the petite black beads that go on this. I have plenty of black beads I can probably um, if I can't if I can't find any of my stash, I can get them at the local needle workshop. I'm not really worried about missing the black beads. But the Mill Hill kit I decided to work on was the Buttons and Beads Enchanted Pumpkin. And you've probably seen me working on this before. This is the Buttons and Beads Enchanted Pumpkin. I took this to church with me on Easter Sunday. Worked on it on um, Easter Sunday because we played bells in church. And that's kind of what got me started in this. So I will show you um, kind of where I'm at with this. I will show you where I'm at. Let me move. 
Move the needle minder. Ugh. Come on. There we go. Move the needle minder. So here is where I'm at with the enchanted pumpkin. So where I was when I first started the stitching on this, I was all the way over here with this medium orange. I also had only gotten the dark orange up to here on this side and only from here this way all the way around. So I hadn't done any of this corner and a good majority of the top in the dark orange. So I was over here in the medium orange. So I have since filled in all this orange medium orange so the only medium orange that I have left which will complete all of the orange is this section right here so um, the orange will be done but I still have black and all the black all the rest of the stitching that's left besides the beads is black stitching and you can see it's gonna go everywhere else on the on the pattern So my goal for the month is to finish the stitching on this. I don't know, um, that's just to get the square on my whipple board. So that is the Enchanted Pumpkin by Mill Hill. And it's done on the orange perforated paper. It's actually pretty, showing up pretty good. So I'm having fun stitching this. It's a pretty, it's a pretty fun stitch. And I'm stitching this in, in, in hand. There's some people I know out there that um, they'll take the um, those stretcher bar frames that you can get for needlepoint and they'll tack their perforated paper to those needlepoint stretcher bars. Um, I thought about doing that to make this a little a little more hefty and give me a little a little better grip to the side but I just haven't done that yet. And I'm probably not gonna do it since I'm so close to finishing this. But anyway, Enchanted Pumpkin by Mail Hall. And that actually kind of finishes just my updates for the month because I haven't really been working on a whole lot. I've just been working on this. My stitchy bug kind of left me. And um, yeah, so that's kind of what I've been working on. Um, and that is all I have for you guys. But um, a couple of other things. So I was watching. Oh, and I said I was going to. Um, no, that's not all. I'm just going to talk about a couple of YouTubers that I have been watching. So um, I might have mentioned before there is a new YouTuber to me. Her name is Steno Stitchers or Steno Stitches. Um, her name is Shelly. She has an Etsy shop. Her husband designs and she sells and stitches. Um, and then there is Sprinklestein Stitches that I've also mentioned before. She's really funny and she's the one that got me to purchase the Jackalopian Tapestry from Lindy Stitches. Um, so I will link both of them below. And three other new, new to me floss tubers that I have watched in this last week. The first one is the Stitchy Witch. I came across her on April 16th. Um, and she's been doing floss tube videos for about nine months and she has quite a few out there. Um, she's doing an artisy pattern stitch with me in her latest video, or at least the latest video as of the 16th. And her name is Carla and she likes to do a lot of heaven and earth designs and MLI, Marilyn Leavitt Emblem, who is, uh, Nora Corbett's mom. Um, she likes to do a lot of her patterns and collect them. So that is the Stitchy Witch. Then I also, on that same day, got into finally a farm girl. Her name is Chrissy. She's been doing a lot of interesting things too. So I've been enjoying her videos as well. It's finally a farm girl. And the third one that I just came across today, actually, her name is Lori Wilson and she is Thread Milk Design. I don't know. I think her channel is under her name, Lori Wilson. That's Lori with an I. But um, she has a, a sh shop, online shop called Thread Milk Design. And um, one of the things that she's apparently known for is she gets these little milk pogs or little milk 
tags or I know they're like little cardboard milk things and she turns them into floss drops so um, milk caps is what she calls them but they're kind of a heavy-duty cardboard that she punches holes in and then she sells them in sets of 10 or 50 and um, you can get them from her what if one of the other things that she comes she came up with she tends to like to put all her floss on floss drops and that's how she stores them um, instead of putting her skeins her DMC and all her fancy flosses in um, like floss away bags and stuff she gets them all cut into 18 inch lengths and um, puts them all on a floss drops so all of her storage is on floss drops on the milk caps that um, she sells and um, she does that because she prefers to work with 18 inch lengths she says she stitches a lot of her items using one strand of floss over two threads um, so having all her threads pre-cut for whatever project she's working on just makes it really nice plus she can also kind of really quickly go in and kit up a piece by taking one or two strand six strand sections of floss off of each of the drops and putting them on their own little drops for each of her kits that she's kitting up it, it just goes really quick for her and um, so she can have all her flosses hanging up um, kind of a, a, a master stash and then she can kit up from there but um, she came up with this wood nine inch wood gauge and it's an actual actual nine inch um, piece of wood that I think that she said is about a half inch thick but her husband um, cuts them and burns burns the etches into it for each of the designation but it's nine inches long so all she has to do is take take the piece of um, wood and wrap her skeins of floss around it and then cut once and she has her um, 18 inches of uh, thread to put on her floss drops so um, she sells the floss gauge the nine inch wood floss gauges on her on her website but when I looked today she was out she was also out of the thread milk milk caps floss drops she also sells floss rings and fobs scissor fobs and whatnot and project bags and some other stuff but it looked like um, she was she was kind of low on stock on a lot of things so hopefully she'll be restocking soon but I thought she was really interesting because um, she's kind of given me um, a little bit of an idea so currently right now what I do I like to use floss away bags to store my um, floss in general that's how I store all my flosses in floss away bags that way I don't have to bobbinate skeins I don't have to worry about doing anything with them it keeps um, dust and cat hair and dog hair and dirt and if anything gets spilled it keeps all my floss from getting wet um, getting ick all over them so I tend to use floss away bags and so I can actually show you that here so um, I also have these dollar shoe boxes these are the plastic shoe boxes but you can see here there's floss away bags in here um, and this is how I store my floss it's by DMC color and it's in order so that's how I store all my flosses this just happens to be my container of DMC this would be 01 DMC 01 through like DMC 700s this is 01 through 700s so these are the ones that aren't currently in use for projects right now the DMC 01 to 700s that aren't in use for projects I have four other of these containers for all my other other flosses I have the DMC and DMC number order um, and I believe there's four of them and then I have one or two other boxes of these for the specialty flosses like the weeks the gentle art sampler threads the flower threads the pearl cottons you know all the other stuff that I have too so this that's kind of how I store my floss is in these containers by color number and by type so this is all DMC um, so I have this tub this plastic tub this kind of rather deep plastic tub 
sitting next to my stitchy chair upstairs. And that tub, um, when I pull out floss for a pattern or a kit, I put them on floss rings. I put the bags on floss rings in number order. So all I have to do is, you know, I have three, three huge rings, like the big rings like this. I have three huge rings that are split up into DMC color number families or color number orders. Like again, DMC 01 through 650 and then 651 through the 900s and then uh, the 3000 series all the way through the 3800s. So I have these big floss rings that have all the um, all the floss bags of all the floss that are currently being used for kits. So I only have one ring or three rings total that I have to look at for any of the projects that I'm working on. So I got this, I've had this idea for a little while. I, um, I have these stacks of cards, you guys. So stacks, stacks of cards. These are Christmas cards and birthday cards and wedding invitations. These are all cards that my husband and I have received over the last couple of years. And I also have, sorry about that, I also have a circle punch. Um, so when I was watching, and her name just escaped me, when I was watching the floss tuber today, um, I kind of had this kind of brainstorm idea. Um, Lori Wilson, when I was watching Lori today, I had this brainstorming idea and I had been thinking about making flash drops for a while using my cards. So I have this stack of hole punched cards. These are just miscellaneous. It's a whole big stack of miscellaneous floss hole punched Christmas cards and whatnot. So you can see it's just a whole bunch of Christmas card. Here's one that has a wreath on a door with a Christmas tree in the background. Here's one from another card. Um, here's one from the same card that had a wolf on it. Um, yeah, there was like two or three Christmas cards. There's a, here's some Halloween ones. Um, little Halloween Christmas or Halloween card with some glow in the dark um, yellow on it. Um, so I decided that I was going to try and do flash drops so I could kit up, basically go from having all the bags sitting next to my stitchy chair that I was having to thumb through all the time for each of my projects to um, using these flash drops to kind of help, help kit up my little projects, all my works in progress. I have like 50 50 works in progress, at least. Yeah, I have a lot. Um, but I have 50 works in progress. I will be doing a whip parade here uh, soon, hopefully, maybe sometime in the summer. Um, but uh, I thought about taking the floss drops and um, kind of kidding them up, um, kidding up each of my projects. Because the one thing that I kind of find with having, having my projects um, kind of put away without the floss in them. I can't just pick a project and go somewhere and have all the flosses with it because all my flosses are kind of organized by floss number next to my stitchy chair in one big bunch. And three fourths of my flosses are on those rings next to my stitchy chair as opposed to being in storage when I could just simply keep them in storage and take the floss drops and kit up my pieces and just put in a couple of strands, a six strand um, sections of the color of flosses. And then I can write on the back, you know, I can write on the back what the color number is. And if it's Weeks Networks or Gast or DMC or whatever, and then I can have all my pieces kitted up, ready to go on a whim. And I wouldn't have to worry about sorting through that. And it would make my mom happy because I would get that tub of floss out of the, <laughs> out of the sunroom. Um, so I may actually be doing that. And then I can still put them in the floss baggies, you know, but I'm taught, I'm thinking seriously about, um, kidding up using the floss drops. 
we shall see. And then I'll be storing everything in still in the baggies. But I don't know. Because I'd have to rethink everything. And I don't know if I'm ready to do that. And I'd probably actually still keep the flash drops in the baggie. But what I could do also, you know, I could leave them like this. Not put the second hole so I can put them on a ring. But keep them like this so I have a bigger space to write the color. And then you just drop these in a baggie for the project. And then keep the baggies on. I might, I might end up doing that. Um, that way I can have the colors in there. And no. And that may be what I do. I don't know. Um, kind of, kind of a thought. So, um, I will keep you updated with what I do, but, um, I may end up doing that because I have a couple of projects where I have the floss in with the project and I have probably, there's some colors where I might have four or five baggies of floss of one color floating out there because I might have them in each of their own little kits. And the other thing that'll be be kind of nice is I can actually, um, instead of keeping necessarily keeping track of where, what project my floss colors are in, I have the main stash, and um, then I can just kind of go to that whenever I need to kit up a new one, and I don't have to worry about where is this floss. And then that way, too, I can also see what I need to buy. So that might be an idea. I'm going to be probably making some more floss drops um, here soon. I have all those cards to go through. And that isn't even all the cards that I have um, to go through. So um, that is an idea. And other than that, I really don't have a whole lot. That is it. I wasn't expecting this to be an hour, but hey, you know, great. It's an hour. <laughs> Look at that. So... Um, that is really all I have for you. I don't have much else going on. Next week, um, on the 27th, is supposed to be the next draw for May Whipco. Um, I'm going to be doing that. Um, for, for the month of April, some of the stitching groups, that is the March. I was kind of half participating in um, Semi-Sane. Um, they're doing ghost stitch this this month so each day a new letter um, comes out and you're supposed to stitch 200 200 stitches on a project that has a name beginning with that letter or 400 400 penalty stitches that you determine you say go stitch um, the non counting you have to complete um, you know stitch on a project and then you have to complete 20 days for one entry um, they're also doing thread stash I'm not participating in that one this month the April focus, so you pick a piece and stitch a thousand stitches. For every thousand stitches, you get an entry, and you have a word that you have to give for your start. Um, there is a new uh, stitching group called the Dynasty of Dragons. It's like a um, a stitching challenge group, you know, where you're um, where you have weekly events that you have to participate in and stitching challenges that you have to complete in order to move move along. I haven't been sorted yet. I did join it. I haven't been sorted yet. And you know, I took a took a back seat to a lot of these stitching groups um, that I joined a couple years ago because there was just so many of them. There's probably 30 of them that I'm in, like full coverage fanatics and semi sane stitchers. Stitch Mania, sadly, is going away at the end of May. Um, but they have a kind of an offshoot group called Stitch All the Things that hopefully will kind of keep momentum going in some respect. The Full Coverage Fanatics, um, Magazine Monthly Challenge, um, there's just all kinds of stuff. Enchanted Stitching Challenges, Magical Stitches, um, uh, Steel City Stitchers did the um, March Madness Bracket stitching there's myth and magic stitch wars cross stitch frog busters 24 hours of cross stitch virtual stitchers internet international hermit and stitch weekend creatively crafting um let's see cross stitch frog busters there's just all kinds of all kinds of um things there 
I don't know um, what I'm going to be participating in for May. I have to kind of sit down over the next week and think about it. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I have a little planning to do this next week for May, May stitching. I do have Friday, this coming Friday and this coming Monday off, so that'll be fun. Um, hopefully I can get some of the planning done. Don't forget, if you're interested in potentially winning Marjolaine Baston's Gathering, just use the word birds in your comment. And um, sometime after midnight, April 30th, I will pick a winner using random comment generator. Random comment selector on YouTube. I will figure out how to do that somehow. Use the word birds in your comment. Do not use the word giveaway. I will delete your comments. And you must be 18 to enter because I have to be able to request your address. Okay. And that is all I have for you this week, you guys. So, um, interesting things this week. Uh, they came down with the uh, verdict in the uh, Chauvin police uh, trial today. And I'm thankful for the hard work the jury did to come to their verdict of guilty on all three counts. Hopefully that can start some much needed change in our country regarding uh, the police force that we have and um, holding them accountable for their actions because I think they uh, they need to start being held accountable um, and hopefully it will go at least a little ways to making a um, segment of our society feel a little more safe um, I don't think it's going to completely take away their um, fight so to speak but um hopefully it it'll start some conversations and some much and make some much needed changes that are needed across the country in various precincts police precincts because there's a lot of change that needs to happen so hopefully this is the start of a huge rolling ball that's going to make changes everywhere anyway so hopefully that is a good thing um my <laughs> my second vaccine was two my second vaccine shot was two weeks ago friday so um this last friday so i am ready to go and i am rearing um we're looking forward to this friday being my mom's and my husband's um two weeks after their second shot my husband had the johnson and johnson Johnson shot just before they pulled it. He had it the day before they pulled it. So um, this Friday, all of us in our household will be vaccinated, fully vaccinated. And um, we're looking forward to getting together with some of our other fully vaccinated friends finally for some board games and some cookouts and just to hang out with people other than ourselves <laughs> at night. Um, so we're looking forward to doing that and hopefully you've gotten your vaccine. If not, I encourage you to get it. Yes, it's not going to protect you from, it's not going to keep you from getting COVID, but it's likely going to reduce your symptoms and how bad you get it. And it should keep you out of the hospital. Um, so get your vaccine if you can, please. And also if you do go out, please wear your masks. We're not... 100% vaccinated and that herd immunity thing is bullshit you guys I don't I don't believe in that herd immunity thing um, the vex the virus is quite real and we all need to just do our part and suck it up buttercup and wear the damn masks because it's for real I'm gonna continue to wear my masks when I my mask when I'm out in the public because I can still get it. I can still give it to somebody. And yeah, I don't know what your situation is going to be. You shouldn't care what my situation is going to be. All you should do is just wear your mask and stay six feet away from me still, even if you're vaccinated. Um, unless I know you personally, like and I've known you for years. Um, yeah, stay away from me. <laughs> 
and uh, just you know keep your distance and if you're not vaccinated and you're not going to get vaccinated you know what stay the hell home because yeah Ohio's purple or at least Franklin County here in Columbus all of Columbus is in purple which is the worst uh, threat level for our state our state has four threat levels and my county went purple last week again for the second time so yeah it's not good around here you guys wear your masks and stay distant please please just do it anyway that's all I got for you um, hopefully things will be looking up um, in regards to uh, changes that should be coming um, all over the nation for um, police um, accountability and hopefully um, we can start some healing much needed healing and hopefully um, things will just start start to ease up um, we're supposed to get snow overnight you guys we're supposed to get one to two inches of snow it was like 50 degrees today but we're supposed to get one to two inches of snow and then this weekend is supposed to be like almost 70 degrees again so mother nature's on crack <laughs> so yeah um there is that so we had to pull in our all of our plants that uh we have flowers that we purchased like last week that we didn't get put in the ground it's a good thing we didn't get it put in the ground because um it could they could all die tonight so we had to pull them back into the garage so hopefully they'll they'll stay safe overnight um and then we can get them planted this weekend but yep uh that's all pretty much everything going on still working from home um just looking forward to having a long weekend this weekend so um i'm probably gonna take the time this weekend to look into using the floss drops um to kit up some of my works in progress that don't have the flosses um, with them yet so I don't know what I'm gonna do lots of fun stuff going on um, I hope to finish my enchanted pumpkin um, the stitching on that hopefully soon so I can mark off my last square for April then I'll be looking forward to it so um, I might actually do a May May plans video for you next week maybe even this weekend um, so I will you must, in order to be entered for the um, Margolin Baston birds pattern, um, say the word birds. You must be 18. Don't use the word giveaway. Use the word birds, the plural form of birds, in your comment. And um, you must post it by May 30th at midnight Eastern time here in the United States to be considered for this. And then sometime... Uh, sometime after May 30th or A April 30th sometime after April 30th at midnight I will pick a winner and send this on your on its merry way to a lucky winner so all right that's all I have for you tonight it's about an hour and ten minutes or so give or take so we will cut this short thank you very much for watching um, be sure to click the subscription button down below um, and the noti click the notification bell to be notified when I upload new content. Um, hopefully, if you uh, <laughs> if I don't do the May plans video before the 30th of April, um, good luck to the winner, and um, we will see you soon. So yeah, you must comment on this video, Flash Tube 112, in order to win win in order to be selected for the pattern. Um, you must have the comment on this video. I will not accept comments on other videos because this is this is the video. So you must comment on this video, Flash Tube 112, uh, in order to win the comment. The selection, the word I'm looking for is birds with is with an S. Birds. All right. So until next time, keep on keeping on because that's all we can do and stay safe stay healthy stay six feet apart wear your masks and um yeah just kind of be um and we'll see you soon all right bye